Design firms and manufacturers use silicone molding to make prototypes and production parts from urethane and other thermal set materials. They select this option because it is fast and affordable when producing a few or several hundred parts. Silicone molding is a three-step process. One, create the master pattern. Two, make the mold. And three, cast the urethane into the mold. But the time needed just to create the master pattern can create a bottleneck, often taking longer to make the master pattern than the total time needed to complete the other two steps. Now, thanks to fused deposition modeling, making a great pattern is quicker and easier than ever before. To make cast urethane parts from silicone molds, simply substitute traditionally fabricated patterns with FDM patterns. No other changes are needed. The process starts by designing a part in a CAD program. When exported as an STL, the part design becomes the digital definition of the pattern. The STL file is then prepared in InSight, a software application that creates the operating instructions for an FDM 3D printer. Next, the file is loaded into the FDM 3D printer where the automated pattern making process begins with the push of a button. Once the print job is complete, the pattern is removed from the build chamber and any sacrificial support material is dissolved or detached. If a smooth surface finish is required, the pattern can be sanded or painted. It's now time to make the silicone mold. There are several approaches for making silicone molds, including single pore cut molds, layup molds, and glove molds. We'll focus on the layup method. First, a mold box and parting surface are built. The box will contain the pattern and hold the liquid silicone material until it has set. The parting surface combines the pattern with clay. This creates the cavity and a parting line for one half of the mold. The box and parting surface are assembled together and the liquid silicone is poured into the box. To remove air bubbles that can create pits in the mold surface, the mold box is then placed in a vacuum chamber. Then the silicone rubber is allowed to cure. Later, the parting board and clay are removed, but the pattern is left in the cured rubber. Mold release is applied to both the pattern and the exposed face of the mold half. Then liquid silicone is poured and allowed to cure, creating the second half of the mold. The two halves of the silicone mold are separated, and the FDM master pattern is removed and stored until needed to create additional molds. The silicone mold is now ready to cast parts. The two halves of the mold are joined and bound together. This prevents them from separating during the next step, casting the liquid urethane into the mold, which can be done by pouring or injecting. Quality of the casting can be improved by using a pressure or vacuum chamber. Once the urethane is cured, the mold halves are separated and the cast part is extracted. After removing the gate, vents, and any flash, the urethane part can be painted. The casting is now ready to be used as a prototype or sold as a production part. With FDM master patterns, manufacturers are realizing up to 90% savings in time and up to 70% reduction in cost. Additionally, the FDM patterns provide greater performance. They can be stored indefinitely for reuse, won't deflect during casting, and are durable enough to be used multiple times. FDM is a best fit for patterns used to make multiple molds, or when the pattern design geometry is complex and may be revised often. FDM patterns can be used at elevated temperatures, such as those used to accelerate the curing of molds. FDM accelerates the silicone molding process by removing the bottleneck, the time needed to make a master pattern. For further information, contact Stratasys Application Support.